Hey everybody, it's Joy. Welcome back to Fairstead episode 17. I was going to work on creating a little transit hub over here, but then I really got to thinking about what I want to put in this area and I've decided I don't want to just leave it as like forest I want to create some more connectivity through here which will help with traffic and I think our area here could use a like proper size hospital so what I'd like to build here is a hospital focused um, complex basically okay Get this all cleared out. I don't know why this keeps happening over here. The pit of death. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's got to be something with these um, PMB paths that do that. I have no idea. All fixed. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, so looking at there's this general hospital. Yeah, I don't think I'm actually going to include any of these. I think. Yeah. The other one kind of stands out a bit more. I kind of like that. Yeah, I think I definitely like the look of the other hospital more. So I think that's what we'll use as the focus of this area. Okay, time to, I guess I can unpause the game and get some roads laid down. So while I'm getting this road network put down, I wanted to continue on with, you know, sharing things about Frederick Law Olmsted and he actually has a very interesting connection to the creation of the Red Cross, which I found really fascinating. So, uh, yeah, I think go from here. Yeah. Um, so in 1861 was the creation of the Sanitary Commission and the Sanitary Commission was an idea that the, um, the Union had to help support the soldiers at battle by using women volunteers and other established organizations specifically train um, women as nurses to help Union troops on the front lines because the war was just starting or had just started and things weren't very well organized back then and you know they didn't <laughs> it's not like it's not like today where it's like there's so much that goes into any kind of troop deployment, right? So Frederick Law Olmsted, for whatever reason, and I'm not quite sure, but he was actually appointed the Secretary General of the Sanitary Commission, which is interesting because at that time he was known for, you know, Central Park and um, was managing um, that at the time. So, you know, I don't know why or how he became to be appointed to that position, but I guess maybe people saw him as an organizer or, 
you know, being able to manage a project. So, I mean, in that sense, it does make sense if you're trying to create something new that you don't have and um, managing people. So after the, um, so after the, there was a thing called the bull run and the union was defeated there. And so after that, Olmstead really wanted to find out like what, what the soldiers truly needed and what they weren't getting and how to support them because they lost. And, um, of course, Olmstead was just really dedicated to whatever he did. So he actually sent out, um, members of the sanitary commissions to do a survey to go out and actually interview these soldiers. And so they went in, um, interviewed all the soldiers before, um, during and after bull run, I believe, um, just to, you know, get a good grasp on what was actually needed. And so when they got all, all of that information back, Olmstead actually put all the results together into a report. It was on the demoralization of the volunteers in the army. So no one had ever done that before. And I don't know, again, I just think like, it's such a common thing these days, you know, if you're trying to figure out the needs of a community or whatever, you know, you can go ask the community. <laughs> so I think that was um, pretty interesting to me. So um, just trying to think of where I want to go with this connection here. Maybe here. Yeah, that'll work. So what he found out is that the government was not treating our own troops well. Um, there was really poorly distributed rations. Um, there was a lot of um, bad actors, um, which isn't surprising. I mean, we still see that now. Um, and just lack of organization. So basically, it's pretty much a hot mess. <laughs> If you want to think of it that way. Um, all right, I'm just thinking about where I want to actually place the hospital here. I know I want to make sure we have room for plenty of parking. Hmm. Let's see. Oh no, I need much more room. Well, that's okay. I think if I do it here and put parking around back, it might work. I definitely want room for parking out back. So maybe I just skip the extra road here and hmm. let me see. We can create. See, this is where other creators are probably really smart for like kind of figuring out their builds ahead of time because then, you know, but this is the process. 
I might do that at some point. We'll see. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put this here and put parking in the back. Yeah, I think that works. Okay, let me get this laid out. So, where was I? So he basically found out that like, our soldiers weren't being well taken care of at all. And his role with the sanitary um, commission was to support the troops. So that's, that's exactly what it was created for so that we could win the war. So that was in 1861. So in 1862, there was actually a bill passed in Congress that was um, where do I want this road to connect um, talking while I'm trying to do this all right we need parking lots Anyways, there was a bill passed in Congress. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it basically helped them like be able to revamp and bring things, you know, to the future. And they were able to appoint a new Surgeon General because I guess the other Surgeon General was not open to looking at, you know, the what new medical advancements and like you just like very stuck in their ways so anyways something happened with that and then they got a new um surgeon general which Olmstead was really happy about because you know the the one thing that was really clear throughout his career is he had a really big problem with authority especially when he thought they weren't like doing their jobs well I think he even like criticized the president <laughs> so he just was like I don't know. I really appreciate about them because it seemed like he always had a very clear vision of what needed to be done. And he just, he wasn't bothered by like status or class of certain people. Like he would just, you know, if someone wasn't doing something right, he would just, you know, he didn't care, <laughs> which I, I really like. Um, this looks messy clean this up so anyways um, the other thing that I found out that he did during this time period during this um, year of 1862 when they were really trying to like put together the sanitary commission and make it work um, for the soldiers is he worked with, um, I think I need some trees in here. So he worked with the um, new surgeon um, general and basically he acquired a, um, like a, an old like ocean liner that wasn't being used, like I guess it wasn't up to snuff anymore, so he was able to to get that. And then, so Olmsted gathered four surgeons. He took uh, six medical students and twenty male nurses and four um, women volunteers, because of course at that time, like the whole concept of women being involved with medicine is was very new and he took this ship and turned it into a floating hospital which was not something i don't believe that had been done before now that's something that 
you know, we see regularly there actually are hospital ships that are run by the Navy, I believe. So no one had ever done that before. So, and then basically he was able to, I think he got one or two other small boats he was able to get to, and then they would, you know, shuttle back and forth soldiers that needed medical attention. And I believe that they went down the, um, the uh, Potomac River. So, I don't know, I thought that was really interesting. So as part of the um, sanitary commissions, Frederick Law Olmsted also helped at every place where like the battle was going on, they would set up these stations where they would provide cots and medicine and food um, it was manned by the volunteers and it was just simple things like coffee and, you know, comfort food, things like that. And surprisingly enough, like the army wasn't a fan of this and the, like he wasn't very, Olmstead wasn't very well liked because he was unafraid to speak his mind and he was a little bit pushy and he did criticize them for how they treated their own like men. And so they didn't particularly like that these people were there providing additional aid, which is strange to think of. I really like the way this hospital looks right here with our green city in the background. I think this looks very cool. Very cool. And I think like the thought of that time period was, you know, they're tough soldiers and men, they don't need these things, right? Like, but in reality, a lot of the troops were starving. And I think Olmsted even like, at one point said, our soldiers are either going to starve or be killed on the battlefield, like starve slowly or be killed on the battlefield or something like that. He really, he, he was not, no, he really wasn't making friends, you know? Um, but you know, he wasn't saying anything that wasn't untrue at the time. And he like really took it seriously that it was his job to help our troops. And he was like really intense about it. It's pretty fascinating stuff. Okay, I do want to build a little transit center down here to pull our existing bus lines into across from the ferry. Just trying to think how. Maybe we'll do like a little one way. loop in here. So circling back, remember how I said Frederick Law Olmsted was, you know, weirdly involved with the creation of the Red Cross. So going back to how Olmsted wasn't liked, like he was having a really hard time. He was getting so much pushback and, you know, things were not he just wasn't very well liked by our own government and um, it just as much as he tried and he did make a lot of improve, improvements and he did like the sanitary, you know, commission was working and everything, but he decided to leave in 1863 for another very cool project that maybe we'll talk about another time. but. The Sanitary Commission really tried to help other, they really wanted the Sanitary Commission to basically be adopted internationally. Um, so they tried to like, I guess, have some sort of like, it wouldn't be called a media campaign back then, but 
you know, they were trying to get the word out about like, look at what we've achieved with this and how we've like improved things for the soldiers and whatnot. So, but the Sanitary Commission got really annoyed because every time they tried to like, I guess, talk about this, they kept getting overshadowed by a new organization that was calling itself the Red Cross that then became like the thing. So the Sanitary Commission, you know, I really don't know what happened to it. If it like just, you know, and you see that like, someone will pave the way with something new and then sometimes people figure out how to do it better and that's just something we've seen a lot i'll have to like look into that a little bit more and figure out exactly what happened to them but i thought it was just such a cool connection because if olmstead hadn't been so like unapologetic and tenacious and just like really wanting to do everything he could to improve conditions for those soldiers, like the Red Cross wouldn't exist as it, it does now. And also just like, you know, the fact that he was able to create this hospital ship and, you know, make it more acceptable or commonplace that we take care of our troops. Um, on the front line so I don't know I found it really fascinating it was really interesting to me and just like his random connections to things that are so commonplace for us today I thought was really interesting anyway hope you guys enjoyed that <laughs> um okay so my thought with the hospital is I want to have a handful of hotels because I think mean, that's really important near a hospital because a lot of times if you have someone who's going through treatment or surgery or who isn't well, you know, sometimes you'll see these, um, you know, like longer term hospital stays and short hospital or um, hotels, long term hotels, or it just kind of makes sense to me to have that in the area. And then I'm thinking... You know, a few shops, some restaurants, maybe some offices, but I think um, just having the area be focused around our hospital and this like little mini transit center with the buses and the ferry. And I also hope it will just help with traffic too, create more ways to get around town um so we'll see how that goes all right well, i need to get some water pipes in here okay all right while we are seeing what hotels come in, I'm going to put some fencing around our little transit area here. So let me get that in place. Okay, and I'm going to be really picky about what comes into this area, and I think that's going to take a little bit of time, so uh, let me uh, catch you guys on the other side after some of these have come in and we've figured out which ones we want.
Okay, I think we are getting somewhere. I want to go ahead and... This should be like a park and ride, basically. This is probably more parking than it's needed, but... You never know. I love the amount of people that are using our transit system. That is awesome. Oh, and one thing I did off camera, I didn't show you guys. So the white bus here, I have that going directly to our train station. So people coming off the ferry can take a bus right to our train station on the other side of Morningside. So that seems to be working really well. And then one of our uh, buses that goes out to our um, um, what was I saying? Oh, to our um, basically like nature reserve national forest after it stops here it goes right to the bus depot so when you're coming off the ferry you can either go to the bus depot or straight to the train and i think that's why this is working so well okay i think i like having this little touch of local and organic produce here and then I think just doing some regular, straighten this out. I think I just want some regular commercial in here as well. Mm. Let's see. Well, this is going the wrong way. I was wondering why there was very little traffic going that way. That will help. I just don't like these style of hotels. I just don't like those buildings. All right, let me keep working on refining the um, buildings that are coming in on this area. And I'll be back with you. This is, this is gonna take a while. <laughs> painful progress okay I definitely want yes life or death this makes sense I'm gonna move this road because this is the one I want here you're going to make this fit yeah When I do detailing, I can connect paths up to this one as well, which I think will look nice. So let's move this to a small road and then bring this through. Actually, I think we have, we have all that parking behind the hospital. I think we're good. So we can connect some paths here. If 
I also want to do all the detailing in this area today. It'll be a little bit longer episode, but I just want to get this completed. All right, put this in here. And we can extend this with using the same type of trees when I go through and add all the other detailing. So I think that will be good. Mm, let's put one here then. Here we go. I want this whole area to be really highly walkable. I mean, no matter what hotel you're staying at, you can easily get around to the hospital. All right, let me get some more of this in and I'll check in with you guys in a bit. Okay, I think we're getting there to what I was looking for. So this is starting to come together. Okay, so the other thing I want to do is add basically some <clears throat> apartment buildings back here. Um, oh, actually, you know what? I can just pull Morningside through because it already has everything on it we want with the um, self-sustaining buildings. So those are gonna look really nice in here. So let me get a little road layout back here and get that, uh, get the zoning filled in. Okay, I feel really good about this. I feel like this is coming together really well. Sure, we can leave that there. So I definitely don't want like wall to wall zoning through here, but I do kind of like where we're at. Oh, we got a little little patch I think this whole complex will be a great asset to all the areas that we've built so far it's very centrally located <clears throat> so I think I'm happy with it I think it it's turning out the way that I wanted it to there's just a whole ton of detailing that I need to get done and I know this episode is already long but I feel like I want to get this done so let's do it um 
Okay, before I get into detailing, I'm I'm seeing a little bit of a traffic, and we've always had traffic in this area, but I think maybe we can improve this by adding a little bit more connectivity and doing a little traffic management. So. Let me see what I can do here. Okay, I, again, said this before, but I really like how this has come together, and as much as I know, this area is going to take a long time to detail, but I would just like to get it done today, so I hope you don't mind. We'll just go on three speed, and get this all detailed up and I'll catch you guys on the other side.
Okay, that was a lot, but I am really happy to get this kind of completed all in one episode. I think it turned out really well. I think it kind of blends well with the area. I think it'll look even better once we get the rest of our national park done. And then I'll be excited because we can move on to a whole new area, do something new. But I'm really happy with how this turned out. I hope you guys are too. So I hope you all have a joyful day and I'll catch you next time.